fechão. What's up everybody, Jameson Redding here with the Road Trip Angler. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about what I believe is one of the most criminally underrated kayaks on the market today. And that's the NRS CUDA 126. Before I jump into the CUDA 126 and why I think it's one of the most underrated boats on the market, I wanna say that this is a series that we are doing together with the Bearded Paddler on his channel and Wendell Fishing over on his channel. I'm gonna to link to their videos at the end of this video, but each of us have kind of picked a boat out that we feel to be criminally underrated. Uh, Wendell's gonna be doing a pedal drive boat from Bonafide, and the Bearded Paddler is actually gonna be doing a new canoe boat, it's a paddle kayak. So these are the three boats that we all feel are just flat out criminally underrated. So now that I've said that, let's jump in to the CUDA 126 and why I think it's underrated. So full disclosure, NRS is one of my longtime partners and they did send me this kayak a while back actually to do a full review of it. And we actually did a review of this boat. We did a comparison video between it and another one of the boats in their lineup, the Pike Pro 126, which is more of a sit inside version. And I did some videos comparing it to a hard shell boat and talked about those differences. So I'm not gonna get into a review of this boat. I'm not gonna get into a full walkthrough of what this boat has to offer when it comes to features, but I will link to that video down in the description. So if you wanna see more about this boat and other inflatable kayaks and just kinda of how it stacks up, you can do that there. But what I wanna talk about is why I think it's underrated, and then I wanna talk about some features that I think make it a great option for a lot of people that wanna get out on the water and enjoy a day of kayak fishing. I believe that in general, inflatable kayaks are underrated because people are scared of them. They're scared of the durability. They're scared that they're gonna get a hook puncture or they're gonna hit a rock or maybe scrape an oyster or something like that is gonna happen and you're gonna end up with a boat that doesn't float anymore. But I have actually never punctured the boat. Getting a hook in here is something you would have to physically try to do. This boat's made out of the same types of material that you would see in inflatable rafts, such as whitewater rafts and fishing rafts that people have been fishing out of for literally decades. And quite frankly, it's just not something you have to deal with that often. And then when you do have to deal with it, because it could happen, I mean, anything could happen. You can get a hole in your plastic boat. But if it does happen, a couple of things you can keep with you, like a small hand pump and some tear aid and you're back in business in no time, and you don't have to really worry about that. So I think that is one reason that they're underrated. The other reason is they're just not traditionally what you see people using. I mean, the standardized roto-molded plastic kayak is what, honestly, most fishing kayaks are made out of. So it's just not as mainstream. You don't see inflatable kayaks being fished out of that much. Now, I do believe that is changing as manufacturers like NRS recognize the benefits of inflatable watercraft and how easy it can be to fish off of. Now, I will say that I don't believe an inflatable kayak is the right boat for every situation, but I also don't believe any kayak on the market is the right boat for every situation. You really have to think about you, what your needs are, where you're fishing, the type of water you're fishing, and find the right boat that fits you. But I think you should at least be open-minded to this boat or an inflatable kayak in general. So now let's jump into five things about this kayak that I think make it a great option actually to get you on the water and kayak fishing. And number one is going to be how lightweight it is. If you're looking for a kayak that doesn't weigh much, well, it's kind of hard to find these days. Most of your 12 foot sit on top kayaks are gonna weigh somewhere starting around that 80 pound mark. This boat comes in at just over 30 pounds and it packs down super small. So when it comes to the weight, you literally cannot find a lighter kayak than an inflatable kayak. And the CUDA 126 is actually one of the lightest inflatable fishing kayaks on the market. Number two, and I kind of alluded to this, and the first one is storage. Being that it's an inflatable boat, it packs down super small. It actually has a backpack or a case that it comes with the seat can mount on that as well, and the pump can all be stored together. 
You can literally throw it in the corner of a garage, into a closet, and you still have a very capable fishing platform that fits in that small space. Number three, which kind of goes along with storage, is transportation. Not everybody has a pickup truck or a trailer to be able to haul their boat to the water. So being able to pack this thing down in a backpack and stow it in the trunk of a car or in the back of a small SUV makes it super easy to deal with transporting this boat from your house or wherever it's at to the water. Also being that it weighs just over 30 pounds, you can leave the boat inflated to save some time and put it on the roof of a small car. It's not too heavy for just about any roof or any roof rack out there and it's really easy to get on and off the top of a vehicle because you're not having to lift all that weight up above your head to get it on there. So transportation on this Kai is just going to be pretty much unbeatable. Number four is value. This kayak is just under a thousand bucks MSRP, and that is pretty reasonable considering what you're getting. Most of your rotor molded kayaks that are 12 and a half feet long, wide enough to stand in, have a frame seat and some rigging on them to be able to add rod holders and things like that, are gonna probably be around 1200 minimum and go up to almost $2,000. Now they may have a lot of features that this boat doesn't have, but for under a thousand bucks, it is a great value to be able to get you out on the water and fishing. The last thing I wanna say, number five, and certainly not the least, is fishability. This boat is very fishy. If you have followed our channel or you go back and check out some of the content on our channel, you'll see that we've done everything from offshore fishing in this kayak to small creeks and rivers. And I absolutely love it. I mean, it is very versatile. Is it the right boat for every situation? No, no boat is the right boat for every situation. I mean, I guess you could say any boat is the right boat for every situation really, but all kayaks have benefits to them and may shine in different types of water or different areas. I really find that this boat excels in moving water, creeks, areas where it's hard to get to. You have to carry your boat long distances or drag your boat for long distances. That's where this kayak is gonna really shine but I have caught everything from rockfish offshore in Washington state to bass in a lake here close to my house. So it's a very versatile boat and can easily be rigged out the way you want it to fish from. It comes super simple, but you have these Jack Attack switch pads on here and you're able to add those mighty mounts to those switch pads and add some track that way so that you can mount those different accessories. You can also glue more of those down. In fact, Jeff Little, has a motorized version of this boat where he actually mounted some more of those mounts on the stern and put a Torquedo motor on the back of his CUDA 126. So you really still can make this boat as rigged out as you want or keep it as simple as you want. I like it being simple because of what I use it for. It's my throw and go. It's the boat that I know I can take with me literally anywhere I wanna go, throw it in the back of the truck. It's not taking up any space on a trailer and I can use it in just about any condition. Those are the five things that I think really set this boat apart and make it a great option for a lot of people. As I mentioned before, there are two other videos in this series that were done by Wendell Fishing, which I'm gonna post here, and one done by the Bearded Paddler, which I'm gonna post here, where they cover a pedal drive kayak and a paddle kayak. So be sure to check out their videos and why we think that these are three of the most criminally underrated kayaks on the market. Road Trip Angler would like to thank our global partners for helping support the mission to get people outside and on the water.